please stand clear of the doors. Hey guys, on the monorail, where do you guys want to go eat later? How about sci-fi? Nah, it takes too long. Uh, Prime time. Uh, I don't like that old-fashioned food. How about the hoop dee doo musical review? Nah, don't eat things on the bone. Come on, it's our treat. Whose treat? Not my treat. Welcome to episode 149 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. I'm Chris. Today we will be giving the his on the Hoopty Do review. Oh, hold on. The Hoopty Do musical review. It's, it's really funny because like I never whenever I say, hey, have yeah. you guys checked out the Hoopty Do review? Yep. It's the Hoopty Do review, not the Hoopty Do musical review. Right? I know. And I wrote, and you know what? In the history, I read Hoopty Do review before I changed the musical. So half the history says Hoopty Do review. That's fine. That's I know deal. it's fine. And know. and that's you can leave this in right here, right? So I re-recorded the it. first history because I wanted the first history to be correct. What is no a review? What is a review? You know. So I guess we're gonna find out a little bit, huh? As we get test. into the history. But right now we are recording live for our Goof Troop members. If you want to watch us live once a week, sign up for our Goof Troop. All you gotta do is go to dizhis.com. You can find the link at the very top. As well as seeing our beautiful faces, you will be entered into our lovely giveaways. So we have beautiful. Giveaways, signed comics. Wax melts, Disney merch, Diz His merch, and many other things. You also get access to our Goof Troop chat where you can interact with us and other Goof Troop members. We talk daily. We talk Disney daily, and we have daily Disney themed questions. Plus, our live shows are kind of messy and lots of fun. Check us out at dizhis.com or call us at 707 842 0345. Leave us a message, share a memory, let us know who your favorite host is, whatever you guys want, whatever, you know, that's cool. Yeah, send us a memory and we'll share it on the podcast for sure. And also, if you want to send us an email at dizhishistory at gmail.com, let us know of any history that we might have messed up in the past or something we've left out of a history you know of, or give us any ideas for future history episodes. Just... And if you don't have a, a computer or a phone, you can page us or uh, send us a telegram. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I talk Western about... Union. I want to talk about Patreon really fast. So. You know, we talk about Patreon a little bit, but we don't talk about it a lot. We have some really fun people in our Patreon, we in do. our Discord server. I and agree. I think if if people don't, a lot of people don't know what Discord is, and it's really just like a chat room, like it's an like old, AIM. like an old AIM chat room, exactly. Mm -hmm. But you can, it's easier to share things. Uh, yeah. And and we have all these people who are talking constantly throughout the day. Like I can't keep up. I'm very not active in Discord, unfortunately. I'm like one of the least active people in it, actually. But it's an event when you when you chime in, it's like a big event. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, is that the reason why people are always sick of me? Yeah, because yeah. when you guys too come much in, of it's kind of like a okay. <laughs> Breath of fresh air. Yeah. So, but we have people constantly talking throughout the day to the evening at night, and we have people who are constantly interacting and talking about interesting things that I really wish I could get. Because what happens is I'll open Discord and be like, oh, that was interesting. Oh, that conversation was two hours ago. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> this month, Patreon is we're doing something special. The money that we get for Patreon is going to go to a family uh, that one, there's a family uh, student that I teach. Her family's from the Ukraine. Their houses are kind of like just totally wrecked. So all of our Patreon money for the month of April is going to go to um, her family because I mean they were paying for flights over to Poland, giving them a little something just to show our support, kind of what's going on with over there, and help uh, some families that are. You know that we're living in the Ukraine that I know personally. So, well, who here has been to the Hoopty Doo review? Now, I've been there. I've actually been there with Jen. Yes. Okay. So, answer that I, question. I, actually, I have not seen it. I did watch a video, but unfortunately, the video was like a still video in the top balcony that was pointed at the stage. So, whenever they got off the stage, I didn't know what was going on. So, I've never been to the Hoopty Doo review, but I've been to plenty of dinner shows in Tennessee. So I think that I basically <laughs> have been to the Hoopty Doo review. It doesn't look like it'd be much different. Except you get the just probably a little bit, right? cheaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, I had a good time. We're going to talk more about it later on as we're going, kind of going through the show. Uh, but it's good. I highly, Jen, before you kind of share if you think people should go to this, right? I'm going to kind of give mine and you can kind of, let, let me know if you kind of agree with me. I highly recommend you go at least once, right? I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed Trails End better the morning after. Really? Yes. 
See, I agree. I think you should go once. Um, it's, you know, for some people, because it's one of those things that's been around for so long, I know there is a sense of nostalgia attached to it for a lot of people. We didn't do this until uh, we were adults. So there's not that nostalgia factor there for us. Um, so if you're asking me, would I go back again? Uh, I would go back with, you know, if, if somebody else that I was out at Disney with wanted to go, sure, I'll go again just to, to do it. But I wouldn't go out of my way to do it again. It's a it's a one and done. So correct me if I'm wrong. This would be a good family show to go to, right? Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. Like yeah. I wouldn't be like, hey, Emily, I'm going to take you to a dinner to hoop to do review tonight. Like, I don't <laughs> like right. But it'd be good to take because like, it'd be fun for to take wear, kids and then wear your nicest blouse. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I don't I don't see myself ever. See, the thing, the thing that separates uh, me from you three is that I, I live a thousand miles away. So if I'm coming to Disney, I, I don't think this is you, you can't not just hit everything. List. No, you and this would never I would yeah. never, ever, ever make time to go to Hoop to Do Review. Right. If I was only in Disney for four days. Exactly. Because it's just it's not Disney. It's a fun dinner show. Oh, it looks like. But it's this just is not... the, you're the type of person I would recommend it to because you don't get to come here very often. Right. So yeah, I definitely I, but, think this kind of like, deserves I've, a go at. I don't know. I, I've been I've been to dinner shows like this, and it's like if I'm in Disney, I want to go to like I don't know a Disney a Disney restaurant. I, I'll tell you what, I don't even go to restaurants when I'm in Disney because I just don't have enough time. So it's like that. So I, it, yeah, if I, I, go, if I go to one sit down dinner when I'm in Disney, that's a lot. And um, it's been I don't think I've been to a sit down dinner since Emily and I went. I, it's I, when I went back with my family, it's all quick service, quick service, quick service because we're always on the go, you know. So that makes total sense um, just because, you know, when you're on a limited amount of time, this is, this is like an event, you know, yeah. it's, it takes several hours. And mm -hmm. so if you're, you know, just oh, there for the span of a few days, no, you're not going to want to yeah. take an evening to do this because, yeah. you know, you're, you're getting there a little early, you're getting seated, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a course dinner and show kind of thing. Absolutely. I, I don't, I don't foresee people doing that except for that sect of people that it is the nostalgia thing, you know, us right. parents that are like, Hey guys, come on, this is going to be the best thing ever. And the kids yeah, are like, yeah. what, 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 what is this? Yeah. Is You're this like, no, it's great. <laughs> is this the equivalent to like the, uh, country bear jamboree? Like, so I'll go to the country bear jamboree and enjoy it. Cause it's like, so out, you know, out in left field. Like if I go, is, it, is this one of those things? It's like, it's just so like weird that it's great. Well, hold on one second. Okay. First off you're at, uh, the, uh, Fort wilderness, right? Uh huh. See, and uh, I would never go to Fort wilderness ever. Oh, but you're missing out. No, but because I live in Fort Wilderness, like I could, I vacation in Fort Wilderness every summer. Like I, I, I go, I go in, into the, into, you know what I mean? Like I have that all around me. So it's like when I it's like I'll I would never go to the boardwalk on uh when I go to uh, Disney I would never say the boardwalk because right. I have the boardwalk an hour and a half away from me yeah so I think it's I think but you, you guys, don't though but you huh? don't because it's not Disney fied what the boardwalk. Yeah, yours all is, the far, all, all, it's not is, I mean, we, yeah. everyone has like forests and stuff like around them, but it's not Disney five. Your right? boardwalk like, is you that Disney. That's when you get that, that that Disney experience. And people who usually like to go to Disney like to get that Disney experience. I would I, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, your boardwalk is New Jersey five, which is the opposite of Disney five. So going to Disney <laughs> boardwalk is way different. Yeah, but I don't get harassed at the Disney boardwalk, so it's not as fun. <laughs> right. Let's get to the his on the hoop de do musical review. The hoop de do musical review is a dinner show performing in the Pioneer Hall at Fort Wilderness Resort in Walt Disney World. Hoop de do musical review is considered one of the longest running dinner shows in America, debuting in 1974. It has not had a lot of changes since its first premiere. This dinner musical runs three times a night, seven days a week, and comes with all-you-care-to-eat menu, which includes fried chicken, ribs, corn, potatoes, beer, and wine. Hoop to Do Review did take a hiatus, shutting down in 2020, along with the parks, and is going to start back up in June of 2022. 1974. This this is this was probably the one of the originals for sure. Yes. And it's kind of crazy to think about, right? Because right now there's I mean there's a whole bunch of dinner shows out there, right? It's like pirate dinner shows. There's, you know, murder mystery dinner shows. And 
I mean, this You're is like not one of the original. You're talking about at Disney, right? Like, yeah. there's a murder mystery death dinner show at Disney. No, Center? but this is probably like one of the most, like this is one of the original uh, dinner shows in America. So yes. I'm just saying, like, this is like one of the the first show types of dinners that you can go to anywhere, right? Longest last, longest running. Really? Yeah. Oh, longest running. Okay, I right. got that. Makes I don't. Sense. I don't think about. I don't know about oldest, but I know it's. It was the longest running. And I don't know if the hiatus breaks the record or if it does. It's intact because it wasn't shut down completely. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm not sure how that works. But 74, and they and and as we get in the history, they don't they don't change. They haven't changed much of it, of it at all since the first uh, showing. So looking at this menu, I don't eat fried chicken or rib. So I'd have to be. I'd have to uh, actually eat vegan that night. Yeah, yeah. You don't eat anything with bones. No, I don't. <laughs> the fried I do chicken's eat... the best. It's, I can't fried eat it. So good. But the bone, the bones grease me out. I like the breading. What happens if I let's say you went with me, right? And I picked yeah. all the chicken off. Would you eat it? No, I, I'm I'm funny with it, man. Then there's that dark meat, and it's like I don't know. I I like the real gross white meat, the real dry stuff. So the 1974 original cast met back up recently. That's cool. And did a like a meet a meetup. It was uh 2014 when they all met up. Uh, the original cast from the Hoopy Doo review, which is really cool. where they meet up at. Uh, at, at probably the, the Hoopy Doo review. Do review. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what awesome. kind of what kind of pressure would that have been on the current cast at that time to know the original cast was sitting in the audience? Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, that would definitely be pressure for sure. The Hoop Dee Doo Review performs in Pioneer Hall, which opened on April 1st, 1974. Disney legend Sam McKim, who drew some of the original sketches of Disneyland, designed the Pioneer Hall, which is known for its rustic look. It took 1,283 pine logs from Montana and 70 tons of stone from North Carolina to build the venue. The viewing act on April 1st was a country western called the Star Spangled Washboard Band. Director of Entertainment for Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts, Bob Yanni, hired Larry Billman to put together a dinner show for Pioneer Hall to help entertain guests in the evening. Larry Billman would go on to write, direct, and produce hundreds of shows for the Disney parks. The show was only going to last the summer, which is why they planned on only using college interns. Billman's love for Hollywood movies helped lead him toward the type of characters he wanted in the show. He wanted every type of leading man and leading lady imaginable. The show was originally called We're With You, Mother McCree, but was eventually changed to Hoop Dee Doo Review. Disney World Fine Arts College Workshop Program interns auditioned for the lead roles, as well as over 600 college students who sent in videos for their auditions. I wonder why they changed it from uh, We're With You, Mother McCree. That's a, that's a pretty catchy name. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that wouldn't have stood the test of time as well as the hoop de doo musical review. It's a good guess. So uh, my weird flex is that I have a gigantic Christmas wreath from the outside of Pioneer Hall that is part of my Christmas decoration. Oh, that really? is awesome. Oh, wow. That's really cool. That is so cool. There's a lot of cool um, antique shops in like, uh, oh gosh, what's it called? Lakeland Antique Mall, I think it is. I watch this guy that goes shopping there all the time. You can buy all the decorations that have been in the hotels and stuff. It's so cool. I have that and I have a big piece of garland that's off of the um, Disney dream. Those are my two. Oh, cool. Big things. That is cool. That's awesome. So, hey, how funny is it? They were like, okay, we're just going to open this up. It's not going to be for a very long time. And it becomes like one of the longest running dinner shows ever. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that is really fun. Like, let's just hire some interns and just tell them, you know, just, you know, have fun with it. <laughs> they like, put a lot more effort. Of a deal. Like, wow. The they had a lot of last, fun with it. A lot less. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hire professionals they're like uh the person was like yeah what do we gotta do you have to try to m match interns <laughs> <laughs> you know but i can see how i can see how people like it you know i would rather spend my money like at, at oh ohana i'd rather go to like boma right but i can tell you that this was a fun night for me and it was a fun night for my family and i remember it, as, it was a great time it was a great time. If this was like the only rush, and like I wouldn't be disappointed if the, if this was like the only restaurant at Disney. You know what I'm saying? But there's so many different choices that you can choose from. What, Alex? You're shaking your head like you know the only restaurant at Disney. Like if that was well, the only saying, restaurant, I'm just saying there's so many different choices of restaurants at Disney. Like this, this doesn't make it. Like this is a great restaurant, right? I would rather go to like this restaurant than like a like like uh, many other restaurants. Name right? one, but at <laughs> Disney, name one. This <laughs> Chili's. 
No, a Disney. Oh, wait, no. wait, wait. You're not. You're not talking about any other Disney restaurant. Okay. You're talking about? I would rather. I would rather go to this restaurant than the pirate show that's an I Drive. Wait, no, no, no. Like, Name you're... a Disney re- a Disney place. You rather go to this okay. than a Disney place. I'd rather eat here than you know the place, the new place that's in the contemporary. The steak, steak, whatever the name of that place is. I'd rather eat here than there. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. But the difference is, is that this is an event. So, like, we're lucky as locals that we, things like this, we can spend an evening or like we did a weekend and stay at the fort, do all the fort things. You know, we're not running to the parks and stuff like that. And so this is not as big of a deal to us. And maybe that's why you like it more. But I could see for somebody who's farther away where it's not going to be something that they're going to be like jumping to do like we were saying before, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, is that part of your is is that part of its appeal, Joe, is the fact that, you know, it's not cutting into your time to do other things. Yeah, I hear you. I see what you're saying. I, I definitely am intrigued because of the all you care to eat fried chicken. And I love fried chicken. So and it's good fried chicken. I, I, yeah, it, supposedly it's supposed to be really good fried chicken. I don't think if it didn't have all you care to eat, I don't know how popular it would be. Because that definitely. Well, people say mm-hmm. people what? say it's the best fried chicken on property. Right. Yes, I have heard that. But I'm saying take away the food. Would you sit there for just the show? I mean, if it was in the park, would you pay like, no dinner for just I, I the show? I, I would go to it, you know, like if I was at, you know, if it wasn't two hours and it was like a short, like little show that you would go to like Monsters, Inc. or Country Bear Jamboree. Yeah, I would go to it. But they had something like that when you if that was at the Golden Horseshoe where you, you would get your counter service food and sit down and there was kind of a show going on in the background. And I don't know how many people would stay and watch that thing in its entirety. Question. Best fried chicken on property, right? You don't even like fried chicken. So no, I'm, as, no, I'm asking. I'm asking. This, fried, that's, that's, what fried chicken on property. that's what they say. Who else sells fried chicken on property? Uh, Where do they have fried chicken? Pretty much. Like, you can go to any restaurant and pretty much get chicken. No, no, not fried chicken like this. Um, see, I'm just, there's, it, I know like where they Casey's have it. At... Corner has the best hot dog on property. <laughs> there's other hot dog places. Name one. Any place that you, you any, can't. Any place no, the there nuggets. is not hot dogs anywhere. And you cannot get corn nuggets, corn dog nuggets anywhere else on property other you than get, Casey's. You can get a Pecos uh, Bill. Guys, is, is Hoopy Do Review just horrible, but they're saying they're the best this on property, best that on property? We're believing them because they're the only <laughs> like, kind of thing. Like, hey, where, where else would you go to? Well, hmm. Like uh, the new Toy Story <laughs> place. They're like, we're thinking about selling fried chicken. No, you can't. Why? Because that's Hoopy Do Review's thing. If you do it, then there's contention and we can't say it's the best on property. So you can't do fried chicken. You can do chicken no. fingers, but you can't do fried chicken. They have chicken. Oh, I'm going to ask now. They have they they um sell the same chicken at Trails <laughs> End right next door. Yes, yes, they do. They ha- they share they share a uh, kitchen. The lead roles were Six Bits Slocum and Dolly Drew, the comic relief. Jim Handy and Flora Long, the singers, and Johnny Ringo and Claire Delune, the dancers. Billman worked with Forrest Baruth to put together the music for the show. Forrest Beruth still works for Disney today and has staged and choreographed thousands of Disney Park shows. They listen to old music for songs that could work for the show, which is why most of the songs in the show are parodies of actual songs from top artists. Tom Adair, who wrote the words for Sleeping Beauty and Mickey Mouse Club, worked with Billman and Beruth to form the parody lyrics. The cast arrived at Walt Disney World in early June and got to work rehearsing for the June 30, 1974 debut. The show was a great success. So when summer was about to end, Disney executives decided to keep the show running, which meant they needed to hire professional actors and singers to replace the college students who had to go back to school. Disney got the cast rehired and ready for the show to reopen on September 5th, 1974. Walt's daughter saw the show when she was a teenager and told her dad it's so corny. And Walt replied with, all right, I am corny, but I think there's just about 140 million people in this country just as corny as I am. The show is exactly what Walt stood for. It's interactive, family friendly, and entertaining. Exactly my point. <laughs> that you go and you're like, kids, this is the best thing ever. And they're like, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Man. I think kids like it. I think well, Walt, Walt starter was wrong. The, well, she was a teenager. Last, so yeah, that's true. They don't like anything. Uh the last picture that I or no, the picture of my son by himself when he's got that goofy look on his face I posted in chat. That was because we busted him laughing at a corny joke. <laughs> And we snatched that picture. So heaven forbid he was having fun. Well, you left this out of the uh, out of the history, Alex. But I have heard I forget what article I read. And this is the best um, hoop de do uh, show on property. <laughs> so it, is, it, it has it is pretty popular. 
<laughs> Dude, listen. <laughs> I'm sure that Steak Place sells chicken. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Hold on. You're going to look at the menu out. right now. No, I'm going to find out. I'm going to go into my phone a friend. I'm going to find out um, where else sells chicken. When So when you're calling uh, your phone a friend over. So obviously 2020 came along. The pandemic came along. Right. Mm -hmm. And they shut this down. And over at Magic Kingdom, the cast, they got hired to work uh, in Frontierland over at Magic Kingdom. Oh, okay. And if you look online, there's a video of them. You know, they start playing the music out on the street, and then the crew comes out and they start doing the hoopty doo kind of a routine. Oh, that's say that cool. It, yeah, it's really cool. So, you know, not only did they shut down, guess what, guys? One of the reasons why we're doing this episode is that they're opening back up. So, mm -hmm. the hoopty doo review is opening back up. I think in June sometime. Is it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, which is super exciting because number one, there's live music mm -hmm. at this. Yes. Um, at the review, right? There's live music. It's great to have live music back at Disney, right? It's good to have these musicians having jobs back. It's good to have these 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 dancers and these um you know these actors out there it's, and actresses. It's good for them to have their jobs back. It's all super exciting. It's exciting news. Uh, Yelp has uh, Chick Fil A um ahead of Hoopty Doo review for fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um, also on property, Primetime Cafe has fried chicken. Oh, oh, busted, Chris. It's another place I wouldn't want to go to. Mute. Really? Prime oh, prime time. <gasps> Wow. Oh, I love prime time. That's the one place I hope we get to go because you want to know why? PB and J milkshake, delicious. Uh, see, I go for that, but I wouldn't go for the food. I'm not just not a big uh, American food guy. Wait, hold on, hold on. Will your Lent be over by the time you get there? The PB and J milkshake. Yeah. Does that count as a PB and J? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll it'll be over. PB and J. Would it count my, though? My um, there's my no bread. Butter and jelly will be gone. It wouldn't count actually. <laughs> there's no bread. It's Chris just P, no It's P I J. I gave. Pidge. It's a. Pidge. I gave up. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> I still blend them. I still food process them. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just can't eat it. Just can't eat it with my hands. I can't wait for you to get to the pearly gates and Jesus is like. Remember that one time? <laughs> <laughs> that one time you had that peanut butter and Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> the hoop to do review was a simple concept: a vaudeville troupe performing as pioneers. The two-hour variety act consists of Wild West themed dancing and singing with the addition of improvised audience-centric comedy. The six lead roles play off each other, as well as the crowd, allowing a lot of improvisation. This has allowed the show to remain the same since the first day, but still stay fresh entertaining, specifically for repeat views. The Hoopty Doo Review has three shows a night, seven days a week. This is a dinner show, and because it shares a kitchen with Trails End, it serves almost all the same stuff, while also being an all-you-care-to-eat dinner. Hoop to Do Review is known for its amazing fried chicken, serving almost 900 pounds of it daily. They serve around 400 pounds of their mouthwatering pork ribs, accompanied by delicious cornbread. The chefs at Hoop to Do Review have to start preparing the food at 11 a.m. This includes preparing 400 pounds of potatoes, 120 pounds of corn, and 30 gallons of baked beans. It is a delicious home comfort meal, accompanied by unlimited beer, wine, and soda. One of the guests' favorite dessert is a strawberry shortcake which uses 12 gallons of whipped cream and 15 gallons of strawberries on a daily basis. It even has its own song dedicated to it. Prior to closure in 2020, Hoop to Do Review offered three viewing tiers, which varied in price. There was a main floor, and the other two options were both balconies. So 100, so, go ahead, pounds, go ahead, Sorry. 100 pounds of that chicken was just for you, right, Joe? Out of that 900 pounds. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I can yeah, throw away a lot of fried chicken. And you know what the best part is? I always dreamed of just eating the skin, and I could there. You could. Oh you might get. So you might get funny looks. <laughs> like this, this bringing about fifty pounds of skin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just the skin. Just the skin. All you can eat cornbread and all you can drink beer. Sounds like a pretty fun night. I, yeah, I wonder how many people have to get escorted out because they've gotten too intoxicated off the all you yeah. can drink alcohol. It's a fun. It's a fun time. So those there was a few of those. OK, Spirit of Aloha, which is going away. And that was one that was um, unlimited beer and I think wine. Um, you know, there's things like the um, Luau out at Alani and stuff like that. There's a few of these that have the unlimited um alcoholic beverages with it. And it, it's always kind of a plus because it just makes it a little bit funnier. Right after you've, uh, <laughs> I'd imagine, yeah. After you've <laughs> pounded so a few someone, of those beers before uh, <laughs> the show starts, there's probably Walt, a reason. Walt's like this. Walt's like he hears that comment from his daughter, or whatever you know, right? He's like, oh, you know, 
well, I'm corny. And then he kind of goes to his executive. He's like, bring in the beer. I'm just pour, pour in the beer. It'll make it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were talking about Patreon earlier in the uh, earlier in the show. Um, so I do want to touch back on that. If you want to um, slander me, feel free to join our Patreon. <laughs> I have to I have to defend myself here. Listen, listen. First, I said not interested in going to Hoopty Doo Review. Then I said primetime cafe not my thing well let me defend myself here listen when i go to disney i'm not <laughs> well, why I just, why are you I, defending I, I, yourself I, what's I, going on i looked up they're, they're just slandering me in the chat saying all oh, primetime and down with yob listen 50s primetime cafe menu i'm not going a thousand miles to get mom's pot roast i can go to my mother-in-law's and get pot roast and i don't have to pay 25 dollars for it. i'm not getting cousin megan's traditional meatloaf i don't even like meatloaf I'm a vegetable. Oh, I can get Caesar salad with chicken for seventeen dollars. I can go to Salad Works for ten bucks. I'm not. And then, it's, <laughs> but you're you're, t- you're trying to tell me that they have a restaurant in Disney and people are paying to get 1950s food. It's 2020, 2022. We, we've gone 70 years of advancing of food and you're going to eat meatloaf, 50s meatloaf. I want to eat Listen. in outer space. I want to eat, I want to eat in Batu. I want to eat in, in um avatar world, wherever that is. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to go to a 50s. And don't they yell at you there? Yes. Yeah. yeah they do yell at you. Do you think they were eating peanut butter and jelly milkshakes back in 1950? There's no that's, peanut butter. That's 2000s right no, there, man. There's no that's peanut butter jelly milkshake. You lied to me. I've been bamboozled, hoodwinks, led astray by you, Joe. There is no peanut butter and jelly milkshake. Yes, I there just is. Look up and down the menu. It is there. So anymore. it's oh, at the. Is. So it's it's, it's at the it's at the bar, but they may have stopped it in the past year because the last time that we were at studios, my husband went in to get one and they didn't have them. I don't know if that's that like was a temporary thing. thing. There. So I used to be like the the uh, the not so into Disney guy. So I guess uh, I have to move over for Chris. I was say so everyone's kind of like, all right, well, <laughs> I'm anti Disney restaurants. I'm anti sit down restaurants. Okay, I, I mean I'm anti paying money, so I'm kind of on board. <laughs> I, I I literally when I go down there, I eat chicken tenders and pretzels the whole time. Well, that's the only thing a little tum tum can can take. It is true. The heat is not good with me. <laughs> did, did, did you just say tum tum? <laughs> <laughs> Wake up in the morning, have two shots of Pepto Bismol, go to the parks. When I get into the air condition, I can down, uh, I can keep down a Mickey pretzel with some of that fake cheese, and then uh, maybe a little bit later, if I'm feeling better, some chicken tenders. So I uh, listen. I I can completely relate with what you're saying, Chris, because we're going back to Disneyland in May, but literally we're going for a day. Oh, like we're wow. going to be in, we're going to be in California for 36 hours. It's a whole long story. And one day <laughs> to nail both of those parks. Oh my gosh. So when we were talking about, we just came up on the, you know, 60 days make, if you want to make a reservation for something and we were talking about it and we're like, you know what? We don't have time for that. There is no time to sit down and eat anywhere. It's going to be like, chimichanga on the run kind of thing so that we can get through the day so i i can respect chris's not wanting to waste his time at a sit-down place i feel like that's half the fun getting something real quick eating it on the go i don't know i just i don't know we're also gonna get a mickey shaped pretzel we're also gonna get a really good churro i would recommend this kind of experience the sitting down this dinner theater kind of thing in fact what i would recommend to anybody if they have the opportunity to just do a long weekend at fort wilderness that is a lot of fun camp get a cabin, do all the activities they have going on there, see the hoopty doo review, have the brunch at Trails End, you know, do the pony rides, you know, all of the stuff that the fort entails. And that's a nice weekend. I and would I, encourage everybody to try that once if they could. And I have yet to do any of that. I have yet to spend a day at a, ho- at a resort. And, you know, because my wife and I were just go and ride rides. But, you know, as our kids get older, that's going to be a more economical thing to do is to go spend a weekend at a resort because we're locals, because we're, you know, we're going to eventually be um, annual holders again. That is something we can do is spend a weekend at a resort, unlike Chris, who can't do that. It's crazy to me. And it's because I, I, I'm not in your shoes or the people's shoes that I'm about to talk about. But like when Emily and I are going to the park. And we see people like laying out of the pool. I'm like, how are they laying out of the pool? They're yeah. in Disney. Like they're wasting a day. Right. Because like, because when I go there, I'm go, 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 go. Yes. I get I get drive a breakfast sandwich and a Powerade and we're off. You know? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. get a good breakfast. As someone who has anxiety, I don't know how you deal with it. Because I feel like I would be like freaking out trying to get all this stuff into one or two days. And but who says I don't? 
Oh, I, I, I mean, I guess not. I, you didn't say you didn't, so I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait until you have to until you add the kid factor into that, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you're gonna, because then you're gonna jam in. Now we want to see all the things that we want to see, but you also want to, you know, come on, kids, we got to look at this. You got to see this. You got to do you that. To write, and that's now you have to write. It's a small world every time. Whole another uh, layer of anxiety. Oh man, that'll be Emily. I'll just say that I, I got motion sick on a ride, and uh, you take them there. I, I gotta, I gotta sit this one out. Maybe that's the point in time where you do sit at the resort by the pool. No, she walks past minecart and he's on there. (laughs) We. I'm starting to get it. The Hoop-dee-doo musical review has famously stayed relatively the same since it debuted in 1974, making it the oldest running dinner show. Part of its allure to guests is the fact that it has not changed throughout the years, protecting its Americana spirit and old-fashioned family-friendly fun. Usually describing something as corny is bad, but at Disney, corny is a compliment something established by Walt Disney himself. Thankfully, it has been announced that Hoopty Doo Review will return to Walt Disney World with advanced dining reservations starting on May 26, 2022, for shows beginning on June 23, 2022. See, now that we've done this, I kind of feel like a long weekend at the fort and maybe the Hoopty Doo is in order. Yeah. yeah. I'm down. Book it. Let's do it, Jen. Joe, we got a lot of things going on this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I know we do. Might <laughs> gone for like two one? months. <laughs> We can do it this next weekend. Okay, oh, but it doesn't even, start not, until yeah. June 23rd. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no, kind of like what Jen, Jen just, just said, I definitely recommend, if you haven't been, check it out once. It's fun, all you can eat, if you love to eat. It, it's The show's okay also. It's not like terrible or, or anything like that. It's an enjoyable show. Very, It's like audience interaction, and it's a new show every time. And there's something over here where it says like Disney's made on corny. I mean, if you're riding Jungle Cruise, yeah, the whole thing is corny. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. A lot of the jokes that uh, that you hear at the Disney parks are corny, and that's yeah. like that's like the best part of it, in my opinion. I think that's one yeah. of the that's one of the char- that's the charm of going to Disney. I think that definitely is. Uh, you know, the the magic gets the kids, the corny gets the adults, and the nostalgia gets the adults. The all in you can it- drink beer helps too. <laughs> <laughs> Quick fire, quick facts. Let's go. One major change from the original script that changed over time was guests being called upon to stand on their chairs and wave their napkins around. And of course, as time went on, Disney removed this for safety reasons. Executive creative director for Disney Parks and Creative Entertainment, Marilyn K. Magnus, was one of the original cast members. She played Dolly Drew. Hoopty Doo Review has had approximately 40,000 performances and entertained over 10 million happy guests. Another early name for the show was whoop dee doo Review. whoop dee doo Musical Review was part of the opening entertainment at Tokyo Disneyland. It played there until 1995. There has been only one big change to the show since its debut. It used to serve apple pie, but changed to strawberry shortcake. This also meant the apple pie hoedown was replaced with the strawberry shortcake walk. We hear Dizzhis think the whoop dee doo Musical Review is a good old time. The all-you-care-to-eat dinner sounds amazing, especially with it being paired with unlimited beer, wine, and soda. This old-fashioned show may seem too old-school for some families, but the cast improvising, interacting with the crowd, every show is a good time. You know, there's nothing better than smelling that Disney smell. If it's walking into your favorite Disney resort or entering your favorite Disney attraction. Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company offers an array of Disney-inspired scents in their home fragrance line, wax melts, scented candles, and room sprays. To bring your favorite Disney scents to your home, check them out at magicallyscented.com. Check us out streaming on award-winning Disney streaming site Sorcerer Radio on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, or catch us again at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Sorcerer Radio is an amazing 24-7 Disney radio. Just visit srsounds.com or download the Sorcerer Radio app. This is this is Review. Review. Uh, so this week, we are going to be doing the first pirate movie. What do you guys think about this movie? This is probably one of my favorite. This is, I'm not going to say it's one of my favorite. You know, this is one of my favorite movies. I do love the pirate series, right? Whenever we go on a Disney cruise, we watch the full, the, all of them, right? At least, I would say at least two to three times a year, we'll get in a mood where we're like, hey, let's just watch all the pirate movies. Um, so we'll watch all the pirate movies. We'll get in bed all weekend and just watch them all with my 
son, my wife, you know, we, we do love the pirate movies. How about you guys? Really good movie, really good cast, really, really fun, enjoyable franchise. <clears throat> I think I missed one of the movies. I think I need to, I got to rewatch them all because I think there's one that I didn't watch like at world's end or maybe one of the ones in between. Cause how many are there? Four or five? Too many. Yeah. There's a lot, right? Um, the, um, I, think, I, think there's, I think there's five. I saw, I saw the very last one on like opening weekend with uh, the, the creepy guy with the flowing hair. And I did, I, I did not like that one, but all the, all I, the other ones I really enjoyed. I like that one. That's, that's one of my, fa- that's one, of, that's probably my favorite one. Is that really? last one the with most the guy creepy one? hair? Really? Yeah. And he has, dude, there's so many funny parts in it when he had, when he's like pretty much, you know, riding the bank, he's inside the bank and the bank's kind of just going through. Oh the town no, there's, so like, it, it was enjoyable. It just was in my opinion, it just wasn't a good movie. I, I mm-hmm. enjoyed, I, I enjoyed watching it. It was a, it was fun, but just, especially just sizing it up to the other ones. Cause the other ones are actual good movies, like with good stories and like the black Pearl. That's such a cool story. Like they, they, they did such a good job with that. Yep. And this one, the first one is the curse of the black Pearl. Mm-hmm. So it kind of talks, it goes really, all of them are about the black Pearl, I guess you can say, but the black Pearl is a great ship. Jen, which ship did they have at Castaway Cay? That wasn't, it was the Flying Dutchman, wasn't it? It was the Flying Dutchman. It wasn't the Black Pearl. And how disappointing was that? Like, that was one of the things that we were really looking forward to way back in 2012. It was like, yes, we're going to wake up in the morning. We're going to be at this private island and that ship's going to be there. And it wasn't, but that's okay. Weather kind of, it was never meant to be um, like a a long-term prop at Castaway because it really truly was a movie prop. So weather just kind of got the best of it and they had to take it down. Um, but this movie, we just probably should touch on the fact that just how, how much of a game changer this was for Disney, because wasn't this the first crossover that, that had, um, sought inspiration from a ride with yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. so just smashing success as far as cast, you know, I mean, my favorite character, um, unpopular opinion is Barbosa. I, I just love mm-hmm. how Jeffrey Rush portrays that character. Um, always been my favorite i mean don't get me wrong i love captain jack but um he's my favorite and it's just it was such a smashing success that they thought that hey we're going to continue to ride this high and we're going to make this great movie with eddie murphy about the haunted mansion (laughs) and it was horrible I guess one of Joe's favorite movies, right, Joe? I, don't know. <laughs> God, I love the point. pirate. I love the pirate movies. I, I, I just want to talk about Barbosa, right? Great character. Um, when you have those characters where you're kind of like, is he the bad guy? Is he not the bad guy? What's going on? Yeah. I like them. You know, is he, those are the best characters. And uh, Once Upon a Time, which we've kind of been talking about doing a show on Once Upon a Time with Scott from No New Friends, right? Um, uh, you know, there's that one character that's kind of very similar. It's kind of like, is he a bad guy? It's Gold, Mr. Gold. Is he a bad guy? It's Rumpelstiltskin. Is he a bad guy? What, what's going on? Barbosa is that character. Um, he is just an, he's, he, I think I might like him better than Jack Sparrow also. Yeah, the first movie is definitely is the best movie out of the whole series for sure. I think the, um, just the comedy and the way they did that first movie was so good. And unfortunately for me, I don't think any other movie stayed in that par which is why I don't really like the series as a whole. Like I love the first movie, but the rest of the movies, they kind of all blend together for me. That's fair. I do feel like they blend. That's why I had to think like how many movies were there? Because I feel like yeah. some, some of them did blend together. Now, needless to say, it's a, it's a really fun, fun franchise. And um, I think that's what I kept making them because people kept paying to go see them. But can we talk about the CGI in this, in this series oh altogether? The CGI <laughs> yes. is like so amazing, time. amazing CGI. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when they're sitting there and they're like, you know, you have the moon kind of shining down and they're walking through it. And then yeah. they're, you know, as they go to the moonlight, is it, they're, they're skeletons. skeletons as they go through yep. the moonlight, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So there's like, you can see like the beams, I guess, coming down from the moon. Yeah. And for them to go to skeleton to human, skeleton to human, it's yeah. just, it's the CGI is just crazy. It was awesome. That was awesome. That was a great reveal. So yes. again, for our Patreon members, we just started a movie channel in our Discord. If you guys like talking about movies, we're all creating a, movie profiles on this app that we found so we can kind of review movies together and we can follow each other on there and see we make lists and we're going to rank the uh, Pixar movies and we can even rank the Pirates movie so that's something to look forward to if you choose to uh, sign up with Patreon with us yeah yeah and the movie that you put in there just recently was the first Doctor Strange movie yes yeah we're talking about Doctor Strange with the trailer of the new one coming out yep hey this is AJ for the D plus club where we cover all things Disney plus Each week I'll be bringing you the latest news and rumours, as well as what's new and what's coming soon to the Disney streaming service in the US and in the UK. And each week we have a weekly movie club, 
where between April 11th and 17th, we'll be returning to our MCU series for Captain America Civil War. Share your thoughts in the weekly movie club room in the Sorcerer Radio Discord at srsounds.com forward slash discord and I'll feature some of your comments in this week's podcast. You can find the D Plus Club on all major podcasting platforms as well as the new Sorcerer Radio website at srsounds.com forward slash the D Plus Club with new episodes every Sunday. See you there. Hey, this is Joe from the Diz His. One of my students that's in my class, her family and friends are from the Ukraine. I teach virtual school, and for the past two weeks, her family, they have been flying all over the world to get to and support their family and friends. My student has joined in my live lessons from Greece, Poland, and all over the world. The houses of their family and friends are destroyed, which just makes me furious because their family and friends have done nothing, and their houses are just wrecked. Uh, So for the month of April, all of our Patreon money will be going towards helping the family help pay for the food and flights uh, that they have been taking to kind of get to their families. If you want to join our Patreon, go to DizHiz.com and join the Goof Troop. Not only will you be helping out for a good cause, you'll also get access for all the cool stuff for a month. Thanks and have a magical day. Niels wants to know. Hello, hello, this is Niels from Capturing Disney Parks on Instagram. This time live from Disneyland Paris in Discoveryland. And this month I want to know what your favorite Pixar character is and why. Let's go! Ooh. <laughs> wow, first of all, what an entrance. I was so I know, confused right? at first. I was like, what is, what is this? Yeah. Wow, live. Wow. That's awesome. Favorite Pixar character, huh? Oh boy. Hmm, so this many. Is... So hard. many. I'm looking up a list right now because this is hard. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That seems reasonable. Yeah. I said my list has to be images, not names. This is fun. Whew. I think I have an answer, but I just want to make sure. Take it away. Oh gosh, they have it alphabetical. What? Oh jeez. Oh, oh, I need man. pictures. You see, I need pictures. There's so too. many good characters, I, right? I know. I know. A lot. Are a lot of really good ones. This isn't fair. <laughs> a lot of really bad ones, too. Now that I'm looking. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I just don't even. This is. <clears throat> okay, I know mine. Go ahead. Say yours. And we'll, you sure? Uh, you, you, yeah. you know what yours is or no, Chris? No, I, I, I'm between two. Okay, so I was between a couple, right? But I'm going to go with my gut feeling, and I'm going to say Buzz Lightyear is my favorite okay. Disney character. Nice. Okay, I love the character because the um, the arc that he has mm-hmm. coming into Toy Story. At first, he's kind of like, you know, when he finds out he's actually a toy. Yeah. And he... Uh, he loses it. He, he yeah, has a yeah, mental breakdown. A, and, I, and I love him. I love his character. And I can't wait to see the Disney Plus, the movie, right? Is that going to be in the theaters, or is that only on Disney Plus? Or is that a TV series? I don't know. What? What are you talking about? Which one? The Lightyear. new the Lightyear. Lightyear movie. Oh, Lightyear. That's be. coming. That's coming to theaters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I can't wait to see that. Yeah. I love Tim Allen. Right. Santa. Yeah. Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Uh, love his. I just love Tim Allen. Um. And yeah. So I, Buzz Lightyear is mine. It's a good answer. All right. I think I have mine. Go ahead. It's Mater. Really? Mater is a good it answer too. Is I just Mater? Why? Because he's funny. Yeah. Overall, like, ooh, I'm just thinking about who makes me laugh the most. Because there are characters like, you know, I love Bing Bong and Inside Out. Terrible, you know, like, oh, <laughs> like just, but I love him. Um, And, but Mater makes me laugh the hardest. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. Uh, Chris, Alex, what do you guys? Alex, you got a good one? No, I'm still looking. You're still looking? looking? There's so many. That's the problem. I'm going to talk my thought process out loud. I grew up with Toy Story, so I want to say Woody right away. But Woody put a bad taste in my mouth, Toy Story 4. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like he kind of betrayed. Because he was kind of like a jerk? Yeah, I didn't, first of all, I didn't really love Toy Story 4. I didn't, but, and the ending to me just was kind of like, Wow, he's going off with Bo Peep, and that's it, right? Just leaving Buzz behind. I don't know. Then I thought Flick from Bugs Life, because I again, that was I like, another movie I, like I grew Flick. up with. Flick from Bugs yeah. Life, and the story about the team, teaming up together. But I think my favorite Pixar character is from a movie that I just saw, like, maybe two years ago for the very first time. Is it Merida? Uh, no, I never saw that one. 
I know the circuit. <laughs> I I think it's Wally. I think Wally oh. is my favorite Pixar character. I loved I loved that movie. I just thought it um I don't know, I feel like that was a really really deep movie and it was kind of before Pixar was doing deep movies. Like Pixar was still doing the whole Toy Story thing. They're doing Cars and and it, it wasn't until like Inside Out when they started doing these like wow, this is you know really deep. And I don't know, I think Wally was kind of the first movie that kind of had a deeper meaning and I I just loved what the symbol of what Wally was. And he was he was really cute. So cool. That also, yeah, Wally's a good character. Nice. He was one of the ones I was picking that I was like, you know, I had Buzz Lightyear. Wally was one of them for sure. How about you, Alec? Just looking at it's this. It's hard, man. So, this well, list. Here, here. Talk it out. Talk it out. Who, who, like, who are you? Who are you in between? Like, who are you between? I, I mean, it's hard for me to even pick. A, a, first off, I don't even know this is a full list I'm looking at. It's Disney. It's probably not because there's so many. Yeah, I had to look. At, I just I, want Google Images type like, Pixar characters. We want to hear an odd. I could tell you what my son would say, hands down, no hesitation. I know what it would be too. It's, Do uh, you? One robot to clean up. Mouse. The, Wait, what's the name of it? M. Mo. What is Mo. It? The cleaning Mo. robot. The yeah. cleaning robot from Wally. I do not know why. <laughs> it was, could you have like a little such plush a hard hand? question? Let me put this we here. one of our trips to Disneyland. He saw a kid walking around with a Mo plush, and he was obsessed. And so we spent an entire afternoon in every store in Disneyland and California Adventure trying to find it, only to find out that you could only get it at the like midway in the back. You had to play a game, and you had to win the game. So I had to uh, shell out money for a private game so that my son could guarantee <laughs> wow. winning the plushie. Which he still has to this day. There's a lot of like really good contenders. The, the aliens from uh, from Toy Story. They're really cool. Oh, characters. I love the aliens from Toy. See, the issue with Toy Story is there's so many good background characters. <sighs> there's a lot. Mm-hmm. And if I could just choose background characters from Toy Story, it'd be great. But I, I, you can't do that. I think, man, Cars is a great movie. Incredibles. I I like Mr. Incredible. He's a really I, cool I, character. I like. Mis- I'm gonna go with Mr. Incredible. That's a I, good answer. I love, I like that. Yeah, it is a really good answer. Yeah, I love when he's one. working and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to, <laughs> you know, mess with the old lady. So he kind of gives her like a way to get around the thing, and then he gets in trouble for it, and he kind of loses it. And when he destroys his car and the kids nearby, and he's like, "Oh, oh, this kid sees it." I, I like, <laughs> I like Mister Incredible. His he, he did have a little bit of an arc in the first episode, first movie, and then the second ep- movie he was kind of a background character, but he kind of played the stay at home dad, which is interesting, taking care of Jack. It was Jack. Cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, I, I don't I don't love my pick, but I do like Mr. Incredible, that's for sure. That's a fun pick. That's a that's a great, great movie too. We're gonna do I wanna do a uh I haven't talked to anyone about this yet, but I want to do a ranking of the Pixar movie. That's one of the things that I want to do in like the, a uh, ooh, bracket. That, that okay. App. Well we could do a bracket, sure. But yeah, that that app that I uh that I put in the chat, I want to do like a ranking of everybody's Pixar movies. I have like a tentative list, but I kind of want to rewatch some of these movies. And uh, make a kind of update mine, but we yeah that would our next bracket episode should be a Pixar bracket. That'd be a lot of fun. We uh, what do we think now? This is a shot in the dark. What do you think Neil said? Think about who Neil oh. is. Russell or uh, oh Carl. I bet he says Carl. I think he's I bet say he says Woody. Woody. Oh, oh wow! Oh. I think it's Woody. I think he's gonna say. I think he's gonna say Mater, just like Jim you know, did. You know why I think it's Woody? Because uh, he's from the uh, the Netherlands, uh-huh. and people overseas and around the world associate Americans with cowboys. So oh, it's like the okay. that's like the most Americana thing to like yeah, about so, Pixar. Yeah. So I think maybe maybe okay. Let, let's let's roll, run the tape. Roll the tape. Okay. Thank you for telling me, Chris. <laughs> Okay, this one is easy. Woody, because I have a friend in him. <laughs> no, I think I would go for Sully because he's so big and a monster, but still so sweet and adorable. I really love to meet him in the parks. And hey guys, what's up? It's a 2009 Pixar film. Bye bye. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was good. Sully's oh. a good answer. I, 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 Sully was, um, Monsters Inc. is another just really good, solid Pixar movie. They're just two really good, enjoyable characters. That's hard sure. to like one more than the other. Oh man, he faked us out with the Woody. Yeah, he heard us because he, he, yeah. he's uh, he's ahead of us. Of that was a hard question. Probably really one of the hard. hardest. I had to yeah. take a nap. 
It's like the most simple <laughs> yet. Most, it was like the most simple question with the hardest, with the hardest answers. Cause it's usually like this creative, Oh, what ride would you do? Or what hotel would you do? This one was just, what's your favorite character? And it gave us the hardest time. That's funny. Check us out on Weeby Geeks, a new podcast website where you can find all your favorite geeky content. Just head over to WeebyGeeksBC.com. That's WeebyGeeksBC.com. And listen to all the other awesome podcasts, as well as Diz Is. Hey, I'm Joe from the Diz His. And I'm Nick from Sandpiper Vacations. We will be teaming up to give one of the best travel experiences ever. I am a travel agent with Sandpiper Vacations. We are able to book any vacation destination around the world, including Disney, cruises, and all-inclusive resorts. We have been working here at the Diz His to become travel agents. And with our knowledge of the parks, we want to plan the best Disney trip for you. Using us as a travel agent, we are updated on the latest and greatest information about all of the destinations. We can help save you time, stress, and sometimes some money. Using our services costs you absolutely nothing. It is completely free to you, and we are happy to assist you with giving you more value for your trip. So if you're looking to book your next Disney trip, go to DizHiz.com. Check out DizHiz Destinations on the very top. So, Jen, what did you do in the world of Disney this week? Uh, let's see. Not a whole heck of a lot. Um, I actually don't think other than Moon Knight, that was pretty much it. Uh, did you like just, Moon Knight? I did. Um, you know, watched it this the second week now because we've kind of been off for a few weeks. Like this has yeah. been a while since we've done the regular mm -hmm. show. Uh, yeah, no, I really liked it a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Like I'm very excited for next week's. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Chris, you saw, right? Chris, yeah. Chris watched yeah. it. You've seen no episodes of it? No. I have not, no. <gasps> Why? I don't have time for this. We haven't had time. Because we're too busy watching the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. I guess. <laughs> you guys should definitely, you should definitely watch it. Oh, um, and bought um Doctor Strange tickets for opening night. That nice. was a given. Nice. Did you Is get IMAX? IMAX? uh what is it's rpx well here's my problem there's a theater that we love over here that has the reclining seats and mm -hmm. everything like yep. that took a nap there once. and they don't release the tickets so you know lately with the oh. big smash movies you know they're like a you know like the final trailer will premiere and then they'll say get your tickets now and everybody runs to the computer all of the theaters will put their tickets up except for this one that we like to go to Hmm. And we've kind of gotten the screw job a couple times because we've waited on that theater and then they don't, it just shows up like two hours later. And if you're not sitting there waiting, you don't get, you know, your tickets. So we did the RPX one, which is like IMAX, I guess. Um, RPX is awesome. That, yeah, it's, never... better, it's better than IMAX. It's, it's, it's at Regal, right? Regal. Yes. Yeah, it's so... the best. We gave up our, um, you know, loungy seats, but we do have RPX. So I'm kind of excited about that. RPX has lounge seats. Is it? Well, my, yeah, mine, mine does anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's lounge seats. They don't go back super far, but it's like the seating in there is really spaced out. So you feel kind of like you're with your own party. It's really neat. But it's the, I think it's the best way to watch a movie. The seats rumble and everything. And it, it's, it's very, very cool. Yes. I'm, so I'm excited about that. Um, and that's it. That's all I did. How about you guys? I'll go real quick because I did. That was exactly what I did was I uh, I watched <laughs> Moon Knight and I got tickets for Doctor Strange, too. Although I thought I was putting a down payment on the house because my friend actually bought the tickets and he requested. I knew he was going to get them Wednesday morning. Then I get a Venmo request for forty eight dollars. And I said, where did you where did you buy these tickets? Why? Fifty dollars. And oh my gosh, it's uh, I guess these are post pandemic prices. And AMC, I heard, is experimenting with charging more for popular movies. Oh my which, gosh! Hey, they're, oh, they're wow. gonna get me every time because I'm gonna because I'm gonna go every every uh, every opening night. So yeah, holy so, yeah, moly, su super expensive. The only other thing I wanted to talk about was um, uh, D Disney news related. The uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ride it's opening oh, May twenty seventh, yeah. which just you know they just came out. Now I have a prediction for the ride that I hope um comes true so in the teaser trailer there was a lot of easter eggs of prior like a, a you know a, a mug from epcot from the 80s 
um, the dinosaur fighting scene from um, Universe of Energy. Is that yeah. It? Yep. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if part of the ride or whatever is going to take you back in time to some of these old Epcot rides. I would love it. I would love that. How cool would that be? Why would they put that in there? Jen, how cool would it be if you actually go into the dinosaur room? Because it's where uh, it used to be. Oh, it is. It is. Hmm. Did they level? I, did they level it though? Or yeah, no? I doubt. I yeah, doubt they it's, yeah, it. I doubt it'd be okay. like that. It but. would be more of like a well placed, you know, a, a strategically placed prop because at um the at Guardians at Breakout at Disneyland, there the old Yeti from the um, Matterhorn is in mm-hmm. there That's among awesome. other things. So it's probably similar to that. But, you know, something cool to, you know, you, the, all the Easter eggs that they have in those queues, man, you don't even realize how much time yeah. you're waiting in line because you're just studying all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's all for me. I just, I'm really excited. I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to watch some ride on videos for that. Cause I don't know when I'm going to be able to get down there and, and ride that ride. I'm going to have to watch a ride on video for it. And I'm sure experiencing it's going to be totally different anyway. The, mm-hmm. I really wish they would just kind of, I mean, most of us are going to get, well, most of us locals will get some kind of preview. Cause I know you got yeah. the email, Joe, with the, the pass holder and DVC and I yeah. got that email too. Um, you know, all those things like that, but I really would like to know, cause you know, for some of us, we feel like, oh gosh, that might be the only time we get to ride it. Is it going to be virtual queue? Is it going to be, right. you know, Genie Plus kind of thing? Are you going to have to pay for it? Because people totally will pay for it. Yeah, so. that, yeah, of course. And what are the odds? What are the odds that Figment makes an appearance? Oh, of course. 100%. That'd be all. Oh, man, I can't wait for this. Anything's possible with this. That's what I need at Epcot. More Epcot. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this might be one of the rides that's going to make you want to go to epcot right alex unfortunately yes it'll waste it'll waste half my day going to epcot to ride this ride <laughs> it won't be a waste because the so, ride's gonna be awesome but it will be a waste yeah. that I have to go to epcot to do it <laughs> i think it's gonna be worth it i think it's just gonna be one of those rides that's gonna be like you know out of this world which is no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> so today guys i got to meet trisha dab um she was on episode 68 cinderella's castle so her and i got to go out and eat lunch she was in town we, we had a lot of fun uh i'll go ahead and post pictures in um, our discord chat uh tomorrow we're gonna go to epcot we couldn't go last week because it was raining and it was like pouring all pretty much all day in florida and uh Flo- epcot has like an issue with flooding so we were like oh let's go next week so hopefully we get to go tomorrow doesn't look like it's gonna rain uh, can't wait. I haven't been to Epcot since pre-pandemic, so I'm really excited about going back. And, you know, we, uh, three Chicky Chicks, we're going to have our own Diz His Smell. I saw some of the other shows, they had their own smell. So I was like, well, can we get our own smell? And they're like, of course. So, you know, if you want to message me on social media, what do you think our smell should be? And Patreon members, if you want to go ahead and say your jokes first, but then go ahead and give us some serious smells uh, after. Uh, what do you think our smell should be? Uh, so, yeah, and we can talk more about that next week. because Maybe we'll do a poll or something. That'd be fun. So that's the his on the hoop de doo a musical review. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. I'm Chris. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching DizHis65. Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for DizHis.